We've made a ton of progress in our action creators file, and we're starting to see some really solid behavior between these action creators and our reducer. We're handling the case in which the user successfully signs in, but we also need to handle the case in which the user fails to log in as well with this login user fail function that we have down here. First, we need to think about what we want to have happen when the user fails to log in. Chances are we really want to show a error message of some type to the user, right? I think that makes sense. So in that case, I think that we'll do the same exact thing as what we did inside of our auth app. We'll add a new piece of state to our reducer called error. So back inside of my auth reducer file, I'll find my initial state right here, and we're going to update it to make sure that it contains a string error. By default, it will be an empty string. And then as soon as we see some fail case or a case in which the user fails to log in, then we'll update that string to contain some type of error message. So inside of my initial state object, I will default the error piece of state to be an empty string like so. Next, we'll need to make sure that we import our action type of login user fail, which we had just put together inside of our types file a moment ago. So here's login user fail. Back inside the reducer, we'll import login user fail. And then we'll add this to the reducer as well. Down inside the reducer, we'll add on an extra case statement of login user fail. And if we ever see this case, then we will return everything inside of our state object, but we'll also update that error property. And we'll make it say something like, how about authentication failed? Nice and simple. Cool, so now anytime a user fails to sign in, boom, we're gonna set this piece of error state. As a side note, if you are really concerned about security and you want to do something like, say, clear out, clear out the user's password whenever they fail a sign-in attempt, then we could also reset the password property that's being maintained inside this reducer as well by writing something like password empty string. So if the user now fails to log in, it will reset the password input. Now, I'm not gonna do this, so I'm gonna take out that statement, but I just wanted to, you to know that you could very easily add that in. Anyways, now back to our login form. We need to make sure that we now take this error piece of state that we've created and show it on the form itself. So back inside of my login form, we're going to go down to our map state to props function at the very bottom, way down here, and we'll make sure that we pull off the air piece of state from the auth property as well. So we'll say air is going to come from state dot auth dot air. Now the last thing we have to do is make sure that this component is aware that it needs to show that air piece of state anytime something goes wrong. Our indication that something has gone wrong inside the component itself will be the case in which the air property has been assigned something other than an empty string. So I think that a really easy way to handle this is going to be to create a helper method inside of our component that's going to look at that air property and decide exactly what to render. So right above the render function, I'll add on render air. Inside of there, we'll add an if statement to see if this.props.air has been assigned a value. So if nothing has gone wrong and this is still an empty string, then the if statement will fail and nothing will happen. But if there is an error, then we'll execute this code inside the if statement. So inside the if statement itself, let's return something to show some error to our user. So I'll return with a view. I'm gonna give this thing a hard-coded style of background color white, and then inside the view, we'll place a text tag. I do expect that we'll add some styles to this, like some stuff to make sure that the text appears red and whatnot. So I'm going to assume, assume that we'll create a styles object in just a moment. And I will assume that there will be a property on there called air text style, like so. Then inside the text tag itself, we'll place this.props.air. Now we can call the render method from inside, or excuse me, the render error method from inside of our render method. So down inside render, maybe right above the button, so here's the card section with a button, maybe right above this thing, we'll place that method call. So we'll make a call to this dot render error. So now if any error exists, this will return 
a view with a text tag inside of it that will be displayed to the user. Now the last thing we have to do is make sure that we add in some styling for this air text style thing right here. And again, what we really want to do is just to make sure that it shows up as red. And maybe center the text and some stuff like that as well. So down towards the bottom of the file, underneath our component, we'll create a styles object. So const styles will be air, air text style. It will have a font size of 20, align self of center, so that will center the text, and we'll also give it a color of red, just to kind of pop out to the user and make it very prominent. All right, I think that we're ready to test this out inside of our simulator. So I'll flip back over to the simulator, I'll refresh it, and now we should be able to say, enter in some garbage email without any password at all, and then hit the login button, and oops, it looks like we forgot one thing, so I don't think we ever imported the view, and we might have also skipped the text tag as well. So let's make sure we import both those at the top. All right, back up here. Yep, sure enough, we forgot it. So we'll import view and text from React Native. And let's give this another shot. So I'll refresh the simulator again. We can click Login, and we're immediately told authentication failed because something went wrong during the authentication process. Cool, so I think that's about it right now. Now maybe the last thing that we need to do with the login form is to make sure that we show a spinner to our users while they're waiting for the login request. So let's take a glance at how we would accomplish that in the next section.